So I'm talking today about document uh, management integration uh, and uh, part of the power and, and actually the necessity of our software is that we can link up with other content management systems. Uh, not everyone uses SIS, so we have to uh, accommodate those other people. I'm not sure why, but uh, anyway, we do. There's a lot of big players out there, and we do have to hook up with them. SharePoint's a big one. Uh, anyone here using SharePoint or in that environment? I see some nods. Okay, and uh, if you have questions, Alex is our integrator for that. He's our our SharePoint ex expert. Uh, Documentum. Any document? There is one. Okay. So now I have to watch what I say. I was afraid I was going to get away with being able to say anything uh, without my hand being called. But we do have uh, some others. Uh, IEEE uh, is a Documentum user, and I believe uh, Doug Gishler probably has given presentations about their integration. Uh, DuPont has been a customer before, but there are, are, we're helping them with integration. Uh, and also, uh, and probably author submission as well. So integration is, a, is real important. Like I say, it's a necessity. We have to accommodate uh, our clients with being able to do that. Uh, author submission, um, any workflow that has multiple tasks and that is repeated, uh, that has repetition, should be systematized. You want, don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again without some sort of system, some uh, uh, some control, some way to uh, have everything uh, work in the flow easily. Uh, and then with this, Maestro, uh, we, we certainly want to add Maestro to the mix to get all the power of uh, this uh, semantically enriched environment uh, to, to build the rules uh, used in these and also uh, we certainly want the clients uh, the source to be used in making those rules. Uh, prior, this is a short list of, uh, of some of the benefits of the author submission. Uh, the client we're working with now, this is where their workflow starts in author submission, so that's where I'll start in this. Uh, accuracy, of course, is one. Uh, especially accuracy in the metadata fields. Uh, if these are already uh, set up where uh, you know the the author can fill these in and with authority controls so the metadata and then the data hopefully will be accurate consistency also uh, the more you can control the input the more that the output is consistent so when the uh, when this is submitted and it goes into one of the other uh, document management systems um, it, it will be consistent and the same. Efficiency, there again, uh, this allows uh, the author to go in and very quickly, uh, hopefully it's very user friendly, and go in and do the, uh, this task quickly. It's more automated, less human intervention, so it, there again, it helps the efficiency. Verification, authentic, authentication, uh, here again, we, use the, we see this a lot with authors. We want to make sure uh, we have, of course, password control or we may use, uh, it may be in an LDAP environment. Does anyone use LDAP? It's a, uh, okay. And so where you can have a single sign-on and a user can actually access various uh, components or files through the system. So uh, we certainly implement that as well. And so actually we may need to talk with you about this. <laughs> We're working on that now. So. Uh, uh, Anyway, so we have that verification. Format normalization. There are things where, uh, you know, oh, like dates. Uh, so we get everything normalized. The dates will always be, you know, your month, day, however we want to have that. So all the metadata can be normalized. Uh, we also would see that in uh, authority files or pull down windows. Uh, so they can do a select and the, uh, the, the data, the metadata is always going to be the same captures the author's expertise and ours uh, and like the one yesterday we saw a, uh, a author submission where the author actually does get to do the, he picked the terms they're usually reviewed later but he can pick the terms or even add their own terms so you, you can get that author no one's going to know better than the author of the subject 
we may disagree in how you're going to index it, but at least uh, gives him the first shot to, to get his two cents in there. Uh, ease of use, there again, uh, a big part of this, we want to make things as easy for the author as possible uh, so he can uh, kind of cruise through that. He's already done the hard work. This is his tedious work, and so we want to make that less tedious as we can. Uh, and it kind of helped train, uh, the training, help flatten the training curve, uh, both for authors, if there's a new author, if, if this is real user friendly, uh, hopefully it's self explanatory. They can go in, fill in the blanks, you know, cut and paste uh, if they need to, and makes it easy. But it also makes it easier for, say, new employees or employees that have moved up because, uh, or in the management, because it's pretty easy to to see the algorithm, algorithm or see how this is working. So there, there it's, and it's in one place. They don't have to go to a lot of different places to find uh, you know, uh, where various data points may be. And it's all in this one system. Okay, this is one we're working on. This author submission uh, system. And uh, it's, it's, it's being tested now. Um, I mean, as far as these, you see at the top, uh, you can submit the file. So by just uh, hitting the browse, you can pull in, and it's usually, a, for this, it's a PDF or a Word document that will pull into the system. Uh, there are various required fields, uh, report number, uh, title in this. Uh, the author field, this will be within an LDAP, but it will also, uh, with a... Uh, Autocomplete, an author can type in the name and it will bring in his, his uh, name exactly the way it's supposed to be. So there's no, uh, he's not typing anything in that, that shouldn't be there. Uh, so it will fit the conventions of their author field. Uh, there's other fields that have pull down menus uh, linked to authority files and there again helps in the accuracy. They're not going to be putting any, anything in there that uh, is not going to work. It shouldn't be there. Uh, what else? The dates, of course, will be formatted uh, the way that the, uh, the the parent application expects it. Uh, we have the abstract. So this, the author can type it in. Most likely, he'll do a cut and paste, fill in the abstract, um, and some other selections that this particular uh, client has requested. You hit the submit submit key and usually we're going to try to put in a large honk sound uh, in case uh, one of the required fields is not filled in and so you can't go past. This is a two page one so you can't go past that until all the required fields are entered. And uh, and you've seen this. This is looks a lot like what Anna showed yesterday in the author submission. Actually, the difference in the power in this one, uh, when this is selected, actually this part will not be there. This, these will be blank, and you will have the selected, or have rather the suggested terms here, and then the, the hierarchy view of the thesaurus. Um, in this case, uh, so we, in that selection, we have run MAI on the, uh, on the document. Uh, the client in this case, uh, they, they wanted the title, if, if words, terms were found in the title, they wanted to have it a little higher weight in terms found in the abstract, and then if, and even higher weight than would be found in the document. So they, it was sort of a weighting system that they wanted. Uh, a title would say get a weight of three, uh, abstract a weight of two, and the full text document a weight of one. And so the way we're doing this, they, they would have a cap on the number of terms that they could select, uh, like say 3 to 10 to 15, 20 terms. And this would go through the title uh, from the XML that was put in there. Uh, and that's how it would end up. It'll be an XML file. And it goes through the title first and pulls all the terms from the title. And if it reaches their maximum term number, it quits there. If it doesn't, then it goes to the abstract and it goes through that. And uh, there again, if it reaches the maximum term, it stops there. Otherwise, it continues on to the full text until it hits that maximum term. Uh, it's kind of a, a pseudo weighting, but uh, this was what the, uh, 
the client wanted to have, so that's what we're doing. So earlier today, we were, or was it yesterday, <laughs> talking about giving authors a way, or titles a weight of three and abstracts uh, uh, two and full text three or something like that. Because of the iteration process here, it's a different way of doing the weighting in the index. Right, right. So, so the, and the author has this uh, to choose from. So when he selects these, he uh, can add them to his selected term list. Uh, of course, he can reject them if he thinks better of it in the back. Uh, and like we saw yesterday, uh, there's a couple of ways the author can search. Uh, he can type in a truncate or uh, his term or autocomplete the term if he wants knows kind of what he wants to search. Or he can uh, wait, make his way down the uh, hierarchy structure and use the navigation tree to look for terms. Uh, we've also, in this case, allowed the author to add keywords or uncontrolled vocabulary, pretext terms. And so he can add those, he or she can add those, and uh, they will, as everything, will be uh, uh, put up for review later. So you hit submit, and, and so then it takes the full text document, it will go to the documentum repository, wherever they place it, uh, it creates this XML file, and uh, like the second from the top, you see file EDL, XML, DTT. EDL is the Documentum uh, file. That identifies it as a Documentum uh, file. And, well, it, just, it shows the DTD there as well. So, and this is, is basically uh, what it would produce. Uh, you do see the MAI terms that were select, selected by the author here and it puts the abstract title. Anything that the author has filled in, we put in the XML file. And then the XML file is used by the Documentum Webtop. And so Webtop should ring a bell there. That's the Documentum, uh, that's their web display and that's their, their, uh, their screen. Um, in this particular case, uh, these documents go into the inbox, and this is actually categorized, will be categorized by business type. Uh, we might see, think of them as a product line or, or various categories, but in this case, the, the client has uh, business types, and there are indexers that specialize in each of those types, and they will be the ones doing the review. So they're not... Uh, they're not exactly your uh, SMEs, they're kind of mini SMEs uh, that go in there and we'll, we'll check these. Uh, pardon? Okay. <laughs> uh, they, and they can search various ways. They can search by doc IDs or doc types, and these are things that have been customized in the application. Uh, when they select a, uh, a document, they get this screen, and then uh, there's various uh, Options that they have uh, when they select a document in there, but this is in the this is in the pre-screening of this. But here they would check the the index of the Maestro review screen. So this is what the index would see. Now, actually, uh, in real life, this would come in uh, auto filled. So. We'd have the, of course, the dog ID, the title, the abstract, and these are things that the editor could see uh, to go by to check the, the indexing. Uh, we have it, get terms. Now, where they can click that to get terms, we're going to, toying with this, we may want to have that just auto filled. And this would actually run the same uh, MAI on the same data with the same algorithm as before and it will just show the index or all the terms that were suggested. This will show the terms that the author selected here. Uh, it'll also show the uh, suggested key terms over here. And then the nav tree will be here. We will be offering the, the indexer the same search capability that the author had. The lady in the green. <laughs> and when he said, you know, we're toying with auto-filling it, a lot of our customers do just autofill it, but it's a matter of confidence. So we anticipate that as they get more confident, 
with what the suggestions are, they'll be more comfortable with auto-filling that field. But it's a, it's a big departure for this particular client, so they're mm -hmm. pretty nervous, right. so we're not auto-filling it yet. Right, right. So, so their process, and also if they want to see the uh, original document, they uh, hit the open PDF and it'll pop up the original document if they need to reference that, which and they probably will want to look at if they don't feel the abstract or the title is sufficient. Um, so at this point, the indexer has the ability to move other indexing terms over or reject indexing terms. So they're the, the last line of defense for this record. So the, all those chemical lines, is that under auth submit? Is that on the these? Outside? Yeah, those are different chemical. So is that auto filled by the indexer or that's by the author? Uh, that'll be by the author. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, yeah, these do come from the author submission. That's right, Lamine. Okay. All right. This is Lamine's baby. By the indexer if they had a controlled list, but sure. in this case they don't. Right. And they do, you know, they're going to have options to pull the uh, chemical directory and some things like that to go back. And so if they do have that, you know, authority file or some linkage there, we can, we can put that if, in there if they think they need it. But at this point, everything comes from that XML file that was created at submit. So when, the, uh, when they're done with this, these people hit their submit. And so at that point, the accepted terms will be saved to the uh, Documentum Index server. And so at that point, then uh, Documentum can, can use that indexing in their search engine to, to retrieve the documents later. Uh, the hits, misses, and noise at this point will then be saved to Maestro. And uh, if you don't know what hits, misses, and noise is by now, you need to stay the next two days. And yeah. you'll find uh, but that will all be saved and that will go into the statistics package of Maestro. Uh, the author keywords will be saved at this point. So, so also at that point, the, uh, where we were before, the indexer does have the ability there uh, if it, to read through the author keywords, the uncontrolled, you know, it could be synonym terms, uh, and they will, can either get rid of them as out of hand, or they can save them in there, and what they would do, they would go to the candidate list uh, and for later review and decide if they actually want to make them a term or not. Uh, and then with Documentum, they have the ability to open up Maestro and have all the functionality of the source master, uh, the rule builder, and everything will be done in Maestro uh, but it's still linked to this process that, that goes into Documentum. Uh, there are some other features uh, that they will be doing some legacy uh, indexing and they, have a, they will be doing some uh, batch indexing of legacy, legacy files. Uh, at this point, well, when they get to the point where they're pretty confident that, with this, uh, they'll probably just run that and, uh, and they will have options to, to control that.